Glory to God. Amen. Amen. It's happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm talking about a God that is sitting on the throne for you and I today. That Jesus Christ the righteous. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1. said in the brightness of his firmament. And in the expressed image of his glory. After he had destroyed sin. Now, let me say that to you again. After he had destroyed sin. And defeated it. Nailed sin to the cross. The Bible said he went and he sat down at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. So that what? This is what I'm going to talk to you about today. So that we could have the same authority that Jesus had when he walked on the face of the earth. We could have the same power and the same authority that Jesus had that we would be a little above, a little above the angels today. Walking in true divine authority and true revelation of the word of God. And I know you're sitting here today, you're thankful today that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, Hank. You're thankful today that Jesus blotted, Marilyn, all of your sins out on the cross of Calvary. That he took your sins through the blood of his Son and he cast them as far as the east and to the west and to the sea of forgetfulness and he remembered them no more. And now because of that, we have eternal life inside of us. We are, we are heirs with God, Gina, and joint heirs with Jesus. We have royal blood flowing on the inside of us today. And, and, and you know, when we, talk about, when we talk about the crucifixion of Christ, as I told you just a minute ago, that there's no way that I can talk about all, just, just the four days. There's no way that I can talk about everything that happened in, the, it happened in those four days from the time that I'm going to talk, I'm going to come back into today, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Why? Because there's no way that I can tell you every, last week we talked about binding and loosening, and we just got stopped. That's where we finished up at. So I'm going to go right back into it. Why? Because it would take you at least 10 weeks to tell, or maybe more. To tell. That's, just, that's just talking about Jesus from the time that he inaugurated himself as king to the time that he went to the cross. I'm not even talking about the resurrection. I'm not even talking about the 40 days afterwards that when he walked on the face of the earth and all the signs and the wonders and the miracles that he did. I'm just talking about those four days would take at least 10 weeks to, to preach on just to, just to get a glimpse of everything that really happened in those days. And so what, so what I really want to do, what I, what I really want to ask you today is the, the title of the message is called the road to the cross of Calvary. The road to the cross of Calvary. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, the 19th chapter. I've already told some of you that. 19th chapter, starting at verse 28. 19, verse 28. And also, turn to John chapter 17, verses, uh, six, starting at verse 16. And I want to show you something. That I want to, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Because what I want to talk to you about, I want to ask you today. Everybody thinks about going to heaven. Everybody thinks about knowing, sitting with the Lord for all eternity. Everybody thinks about what, it would, what a joyous occasion that it would be, Kenneth, for us to have no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more, care, no more worry about the cares of life. And that is, that is all true, but, that, but, but, but then you turn around and you go, oh, I got I to gotta live the rest of my life. I gotta continue. I gotta live in this world, and I gotta walk in it, and 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 I, and I got and somehow or another, I've got to overcome and make it all of my all of my days and trust in the Lord with all my heart. That's what Solomon said. And lean not upon my own understanding, because you're gonna have trouble. Didn't Jesus say in this world you're gonna have tribulations? But then he says that's a sermon in itself. He said, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I've already overcome the world. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Having an overcoming victory in your life while you're living in the world. The, one of the greatest hidden features that Christ did on the way to the cross of Calvary was, was to submit and, and to, to, to solidify your ability and my ability, David, to walk just like him. To live like him and have joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. To have power on the face of this earth. To tread on serpents and scorpions. To take authority over the forces of darkness. To bind the strong man. To have liberty in the house of God. Not only to have the keys to the kingdom of heaven, 
and have the riches of God's glory, have God meet your needs according to his riches and glory, but also have the same divine intervention, Kenneth, the same power, the same ability to do like Abraham, to call those things that are not as though they are. To allow signs and... How would you like to know that you had joy that is unspeakable every day? Peace in your home that surpasses all understanding. That you could literally call those things that are not as though they were and they would come to pass. That you could walk like Jesus did on the face of the earth and have power over all forces. Have power over the flesh. Have power... Sin... I must have power over sin and sickness. I'm going to say a few things early today. I'm a little ahead of myself. But have power over sin and sickness to where it had no place in you. To be like you said, what I'm going to talk to you today, I've been, I want to talk to you about the missing ingredient in living a successful life on the road to the cross of Calvary. You never stop being on the road to the cross of Calvary. You say, how do you prove that, Ken? Because Jesus, the first thing he says when you get born again, what does he say? Take up thy cross, what? Daily. But he says something in the middle of it that we all forget about. He said, take up thy cross and deny thyself and daily, deny thyself and daily follow me. So how would you like to be able to, to, be, to be loosed from yourself, David, but to be free from, the, from the, the, the infirmities of your flesh, to be free from the world, to be free from the, 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 the attack of sin, the sinful nature inside of you all the time, to be, to be free from the battles that you're going through all the time. And know that even though it may be like, it may be like discord and dissension, Kenneth, on, on, on the earth, all around you, but on the inside, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding that, that Paul talks about. He said, let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep and what? Guard. Guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Hell itself can be having around you, but you have this great peace. If you could walk that supremely on the face of the earth, would you? Well, that was the entire intention, the intention of Christ. That was the exact reason why he inaugurated. That was one of the, one of the reasons. There's actually four. That was one of the reasons he inaugurated himself as king. On, on the face of earth. So that what? So that he could establish his kingdom. What did Jesus say to the, the disciples when they said, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. What did he say? Pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Then what did he say? Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. On how? On earth, even as it is in heaven. So what I want to do, I want to take you on a journey today, and I want to show you the one thing that's missing in, in the house of God today. The reason why you don't see a lot of signs, we could talk, we're going to talk about the cross down the road. But everything that Jesus did on the road to the cross leads you to a life that, 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 is, that, is, that is joy, that is, that is complete, that is, that is thorough, that is actually makes you, as, as Paul says in 1 Timothy 3, that thoroughly equips you for all good works. That's why we, we quote it a lot in Ephesians 2. It says, by grace you are saved, what? Through faith. We talked about that this last week. That it's God's faith inside of you, that, that seed of faith, that measure of faith on the inside that makes you grow. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It didn't happen on our own. It's by the divine inspiration and by the power of God, by his works, not of yourself, by his own works, by his own glory. It's, a, it's by on God's own favor. It's a, by his own works, not of your own works, lest any man should both. It's God's desire for you to what? To walk to, to, through his grace and his mercy to, to be able to walk exactly just like he did on the face of the earth. Now, let me read this to you in, in um, Luke chapter 19. And when he, verse 28, he said, And when he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that when he drew near to Bethage and Bethany at, at a mountain called Olivet, you always find Jesus going to the Mount of Olives. He's, that's, did you know that when the new Jerusalem comes down, it's that the Mount of Olives is going to split. And that's when the new city is going to be founded, right there in the, center, in the center of Jerusalem. Then he sent two of his disciples saying, see what he's doing, he's releasing his authority. Saying, go into the village opposite of you. Last week I read to you uh, Matthew uh, chapter 21. This week I'm reading Luke 19. It's a different version. Go into the village opposite of you where, where as you enter in you will find a colt tied and on which you have, he has never been set. Loose it and bring it here. 
And if anyone asks you, why are you loosening it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who went, who were there, went, went their way and found it, just as he said to them. But as they were loosening the colt, the owner said to them, why are you loosening the colt? And they said, they said to him, the Lord said he had need of him. And then he, they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was drawing near to the Mount of Olives, as you're drawing near to the glory, to, the, to your to your ascension, to the glory of God. As he was drawing near to the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples, they began to rejoice, and they began to praise God with a loud voice. All of them, and, and all, for what? For all of the mighty works they had seen. Why? Thank you, Holy Ghost, you just gave me a revelation. For all of their mighty works, the mighty works which they had seen, Saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to him in the heights. And, the, and some of the Pharisees called out to him from the crowd, saying, Teacher, rebuke the disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these, if these here should keep silent, that even the stones would immediately cry out. Now, I'm going to come back to that scripture in just a second. That one I just saw in my spirit. John 17. John 17, 17. This is the entire purpose of what Jesus came for. Jesus says in verse 16, John 17, 16, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world, but sanctify them. There's the secret. Sanctify, purify them. Make them holy. Set them apart. Sanctify them by your truth, O Lord. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, now I also send them to the world. And as for their sakes, I sanctify, see, Jesus even had to sanctify himself. I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by their truth. Why? Verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, this is for you and I as well, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be what? They all may be one as you, Father, and, 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 as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. Verse 22. And the, and the glory which you gave me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. Now let me, let me read something again I just saw. Verse 37 of Acts 19. I mean, John, Luke 19. And, then, and as, 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 when he, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, of the, of of Olive, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. Why? They rejoiced and praised him with a loud voice. For what reason? For all the mighty works that they had seen. Father, let, this, let there be mighty works in here today. Let there be a power that they have never seen before in their lives. Let there be an anointing in this place, God. That the, a resurrecting power that changes our hearts and changes our lives forever. So that God, that we can do what you did. That we can be one with you. Even as you are one with the Father, Lord. And the same glory that worked in you while you walked on the face of the earth. Is the same glory that, should, that works in us today. Well, how? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. So I lift you up this day. And I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. I thank you, Lord, for your presence that is in this place right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You say, why did they praise him? Why did they exalt him, Marilyn? Did they exalt him because they knew that he was going on the cross of Calvary? No, they didn't know that yet. Did they exalt him because they knew that he was the Son of God? Yes. Because Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But by, but, but by the Holy Spirit have you been made known that, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. But even that, even that didn't excite them. You say, what? What excites you today? Yes, you got excited. You got excited when you, when you accepted Jesus in, you, in your life. Why? Because signs and wonders and miracles occurred around you. One of the greatest miracles of all was all of a sudden the clouds opened up and the glory of God descended upon you. And when it did, the Holy Ghost anointed you. He anointed you with the blood of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, you, you, when you were cleansed of all unrighteousness, the greatest miracle of all was you were made brand new. You were made completely brand new 
in the kingdom. If I don't get through this today, we'll start it in next week. You were made completely brand new in the kingdom of God. They that are in Christ are what? You became a new creation. You were born again. You didn't have to go back into your mother's womb. Why? Because you went into the womb of Christ. You went into the, uh, you went into the, 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 the saint. When I told y'all, the, the greatest thing that God did was, yes, that he died on the cross. But the greatest thing he did, David, was, was that he died on the cross as a human being. See, see he, he felt every expression. He went through every heartache, heartache. He felt every emotion. He felt the nails. He felt the stripes that were placed on his back. He felt the, he, 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 he felt the excruciating pain. He felt the weight of the cross. He felt the emotion on the inside of him that he was completely dehydrated, that, he, that the blood was being drained out of his body. He felt, it, he, he felt like that it, when, he, when, it, when he was in the Garden of Eden and, and, and he was partaking of our sin, he said, my, he said he felt like he was dying. He felt like what it was like, what, how it feels like for you, how you feel like daily all the time when the sin is when the sinful nature of the flesh is trying to do what? Trying to destroy you, making you feel like you're overwhelmed, making you feel like you're dying, making you feel like that, that the weight of the world is on your shoulders. But on that day of the cross, Jesus broke the yoke. And by the power and the authority of his word and by the power of his blood and his name, he, revo he, he, broke, the, he broke the condemnation and he broke the bands of sin so that they would what? They would no longer have power over you. And, and that death would no longer have power over you so that you would no longer live under condemnation. That you would no longer live under guilt. You would no longer live under the, under the price of feeling that you, that you were imprisoned by death. And that same, and when he rose from the dead, that same resurrecting power that dwelled in Christ now dwells in you. And there's a purpose behind that. There's a purpose why, why Jesus had to die on the cross so that God, through, God the Father and God the Son through the Holy Spirit would come live inside of us. Not just so you would be redeemed. That's only half the journey. Not just so that you would have eternal life. That's the greatest prize that, that one day when, he, when you enter in. James says, James says in James 1 verse 12. Let's see if I can find that real fast. Everybody has to endure. Everybody has to go through something. Everybody has to go through this. Everybody faces this in their life. In verse 12. Everybody endures trials. Everybody goes through circumstances of life. But everybody wants to be free. Everybody wants a crown of life. You want to feel like what, Kenneth? You want to feel like you want to feel like on earth the way you the way you should fit the way you feel when you get to heaven. Are you listening to me? That's the entire reason why Jesus went to the cross. So that you can experience both at the exact same time. That's a revelation, y'all. So, so James says in, in, in James chapter 1, verse 12, Blessed is the man. So you have to endure. That's why Jesus endured temptation. That's why, he, that's why he felt the pains of death in Gethsemane. That's why when he, when he went to Gethsemane, God had to put his sin on him, on us, our sin on him. God had to turn his back on him. Because he he was because he had to he, he had to be the substitute the propitiation of sin, him who knew no sin is what Paul says in Second Corinthians. Him who knew no sin had to be what had to be made sin so that you and I could what could become could become the righteousness of of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The entire purpose of the cross was to make you righteous, to make you holy. To sanctify you, to set you apart, to, to purify you, even as Christ is pure, not just so that you could go before the Father. That's true. They, Jesus told the woman at the well, those that worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. 
But not just so that you could, not just so that you could go to heaven, Gina. Not just so that you could, so that you could stand before God without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. That's the end result. So that you could receive a crown of life. But so that you could do what? So that you could be empowered with the same authority and the same power and the same rights and privileges of the kingdom of heaven that Jesus had when he walked on the face of the earth. That's why so many Christians today are defeated. That's why so many people go back into the world when they accept Christ. Because they, 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 real, they, because they, real, they, they realize that, that, that when the flesh man shows back up, they can't make it in their own. Well, let me tell you something. Nobody can. Even, even Jesus had to go to the end. You have to endure temptation. This is what he says in, verse, in James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when you have been approved, why does God allow you to go through the stuff you go through? So that when you come through it and, and, and you surrender and you lose yourself and you lose your flesh and you decrease in yourself and you increase and all of a sudden you're, you're made holy. You are sanctified and purified and made holy in the eyes of God. When you've been approved, then he says, then you will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised who? All. Everybody say all. All those. All those who love him. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to keep you late. All those who love him. I'll just go to the next part this next week. All those who love him. You see, the, 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 very, the, the very reason that Jesus died on the cross is so that you, it's, it's not just so that you can be... In, sanctification is both instantaneous and progressive at the same time. Not so that you can just be born again all at one time. And all of your sins are what? All of your sins are blotted out from when? From that point when? Back. You know, a lot of people preach, and that's why they miss it. That's why they miss the latter part of the cross. A lot of people preach that, that, that at that moment you get born again, that your sins are forgiven forever. We all know that's not true. You have to, you have to repent of your sins, don't you, Mary? When, when, you mess, when you mess up, your sinful nature does show back up in your life. Now, now was the, the finished work of the cross... Enough? Absolutely, it was enough. Absolutely, what Jesus did on the cross was enough. But you have, but but you you have to continue to go back to Him and go back to the cross, and you have to continue to allow to 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 allow the Holy Spirit to remove your sinful nature and remove the the uh, the the flaws of the, the flaws of of your of the natural man. Why? Because the natural man still has to endure temptation. The natural man still, still has to go through the progressions of life. The natural man still has to has to has to uh, push push away the thing, the offerings of the things of the world, so that he so that so, so that you can, so that you can walk not walk in the flesh, but walk in the spirit. This is what he says in um, this is what he says in Romans chapter eight. There is therefore what now no condemnation. People stop right there to those who are in Christ Jesus. What they say. And they stop right there. He said, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do what? There's a conjunction there. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's Romans 8 verse 1. So there's a condition there. And that conditioning is, is that, that God, God made a way. He made an opening. He made an opening so that we would not have to walk after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. That was the entire purpose of what Jesus did on the cross. So that, so that the flesh could be destroyed so that when so that what so that your spirit man your spirit man could rise up and and, 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 and you could you could walk in, in the same the same power and demonstration that Christ walked in on the face of the earth that when you're purified and you're made as pure as Christ is made then you become like him the entire purpose of the cross was was for God to come do what to establish his kingdom here on earth. See, he became king, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll come back to this next week. I'm going to stop right here. He established himself on the face of the earth to become king for what reason? To, to establish his kingdom so that what? So that you and I could have, David, the same kingdom principles that he did. That the same glory, the same power, the same authority against temptation, against the forces of darkness, against the cares of life, 
against principalities and powers and rulers and wickedness in high places, you would have you would have that same authority over them that he did. He said, Maryland, that's impossible, isn't it? No, I'll tell I'll share that with you next week how it's not impossible. I'll share with you the, 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 the ingredient of how, how what Jesus did on the cross was made it not, made it not impossible. That, he, that him that knew no sin could do what? Could make you become, he knew no sin was made to be sin so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And he, and he did it over and over and over again so that what? So that we could abound in God's grace. So that we could abound in God's authority. Now you know what? I told y'all, I told y'all last week that, that the, one of the things, the reason why Jesus became king was of course he wanted to be the king of the Jews. I, I, I close with this. I know I've said it a couple of times. Be the king of the Jews. The other reason why he came was, you think about it, four days, this, this one, in four days, one day they're hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And four days later, what are they hollering? Isn't it funny? I was going to talk to you about the mind of Christ. Isn't it funny how people's mind, his thoughts change on you so quickly in life? Four days later, they're hollering what? Crucify him. Kill him. Right. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. I'm going to show you that, that this, this same brilliant Jesus that, that, that had this entire plan. This went totally opposite the way I thought it was going to go today. This, the same Jesus that had this entire, this brilliant plan to, uh, to allow his disciples and everybody that followed him to walk just like him on the face of the earth also turned around and used the exact same fear. And I'll talk about that later on in the next couple of weeks. But the exact same fear that that the Roman government put put see this the, the same way that the Satan and the world and the flesh puts you in fear, Jesus turned around and and he and he, and he flipped the switch on him. What's that word? Psych, reverse psychology. He used the exact same fear to cause cause him. Think about this brilliance to kill him on the exact day, the exact hour, the exact moment. In the exact, exact time, not just any Passover, this was Jubilee, this was a 49th, 7 times 7, the 49th Passover. The exact hour that the, whole, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and take, take the sacrificial lamb. And I didn't say this in the beginning, but I'll say this, and I'll, and I'll repeat it next week. Only Jesus fulfills all three offices of the church. The office of the prophet, the office of the king, and the office of the priest. But he also, at the same time he's a priest, David, he's also the sacrificial lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. So Jesus had to, had to do all this to make them put him on the cross so that, so that the high priest could not go into the Holy of Holies and, and fulfill his duties of offering the yearly sacrificial lamb that he would become the lamb slain. The God, God's son would become the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. And that was the greatest, the, the greatest act, the act of, of, of brilliance anybody could ever do. Was as a human being make mankind be, be, be such a place that they wanted to gnash at him in his teeth, that wanted to kill him, Marilyn, as you said, that they would do it at the, the, the exact hour that needed to be done. It was so important to do so that that he actually ended up having to go and and hide in in, in, a, in a in a city outside of Jerusalem, and for the last four days he couldn't even be seen because they. They, 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 they had finally reached a point of their fear because they were more afraid of, just like today, more afraid of losing what they had and what they said what they had instead of what they could gain in God, that they were looking to kill him instantly on the spot. You ever had anybody be so, so mad at you that they, that they were like a, a, like a wild beast? Like a, they said they wanted to gnash at him with their teeth like a raving lunatic. And they were so angry that they needed to get rid of him because they thought about what he was causing them to lose. And so, everything, I'm going to come back, and if you'll come back next week and pray for me this week, y'all, pray. Pray that the Holy Ghost will let me expound this thing to you. I felt kind of uh, uh, stressed with time this week, so um, I didn't get to get where I wanted to be, but just pray. Pray, y'all, that, that the Holy Ghost will let me expound to you the power that God wants you to have, the, vic the victory that he wants you to live in. And those listening on this video that they'll, they'll, they'll listen again they'll, this week, but they'll listen next week. They'll listen and understand that everything that Jesus did had a purpose. That, that, that it was all done so that you and I could, could actually uh, 
live is what? Live like you're in heaven on the face of the earth right now. Sons and daughters of God. Those who are led by the Holy Spirit are what? Called sons and daughters of God. Maybe we get everybody here next week. We'll all be prayed up in the Spirit. And you'll all be, I know you'll have to work next week. But you'll all be able to hear and know what, what Jesus did so that we could actually follow behind him. And just turn around, just like the disciples. They were human beings too, right? And walk just like them on the face of earth. I'll leave you with this. You say, is this possible, Ken? Yes. You kind of. You ever heard, anybody ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? How would you like to know that you could go to a church? And I'll repeat this again next week. That you could go to a church. See, when that sanctification is missing. You could go to church. Then for 11 years, David, this is a true story. No, nobody got sick. Nobody got sick. Nobody had any ailments. Nobody died. There was nothing but signs and wonders and miracles the entire time. That's an almost impossible. It's Kenneth Hagin had a big church. And, 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 they, and nobody for 11 years got sick. Nobody died. Nobody had any repercussions. Everybody prospered. Everybody walked in full power for the entire time. You know why? Because they were all sanctified. They were also purified. Holy. I'm going to gonna talk to you about that next week. They were all purified and holy. In the sight of God, and if we if we ever can get our church, get a church to be, that's why you don't see a lot of signs and wonders and miracles in the house of God today. Because the only way that you can the only way that you can receive the blessings of God, the only way that you can receive the miracles of God, the only way you can see the signs and wonders of God is how be like Him, be like Him, operate just like Him. That was the entire purpose of what Jesus did, inaugurate as a King, and I'll and I'll show you that next week. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just lift you up today. And I just went the way the Holy Ghost wanted me to go, but we, we, I, I said I would take them all the way too far, Lord. I got so much more inside of my spirit. But, but you know what? Their time is important, Lord, to you. And so I just lift you up today, and I ask you, Lord, just take us right back into it next week. And ever how far we get, we're going to get. I thank you, Lord, that the, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here today, and that God, that you change them, you 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 change them. You you have them seeking, not just getting by, not just not just uh, uh, just getting a, a, a over, but, but actually being truly victorious, walking in the true power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, knowing what it means to be an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So I lift you up today and I just give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you, Lord, that you hear us pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah.